Good afternoon and welcome. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Barbara Stoll, Dean of McGovern Medical School. Thank you for joining us in this non-traditional way to celebrate the class of 2020 as these exceptional graduates mark their hard-earned transition from student to physician. Although we wish we could participate in the festivities together, nothing can take away from the significance of this milestone and the joy of this moment. This is an amazing day, not only for you, our graduates, but also for the family and friends who supported you all along the way. Without them, you wouldn't be here today. So take a moment to breathe deeply, close your eyes, and say thank you. As dean, I've had the privilege of getting to know your class. You are a wonderfully diverse group that has enriched the medical school community with your different backgrounds and experiences. I've been particularly impressed by your camaraderie and warmth. It feels like only yesterday that I welcomed you at orientation, had fun at freshman retreat, celebrated with you at your white coat ceremony, and cheered you on as you started your clinical training. It has been absolutely wonderful to watch you learn and grow personally and professionally. Soon, we'll be able to call you doctor. How you choose to define that term and your role in the coming years is up to you. Some of you will decide to be frontline primary care providers, and some will be subspecialists. Some of you will work in the community, some in large healthcare systems. Some of you will choose academic careers with a focus on teaching, and some of you will become physician scientists helping to expand our fundamental understanding of diseases and translating that knowledge into improved care for patients and for populations. Each of these choices is important, and each of these paths will allow you to build a meaningful career. My own career has been a winding path defined by serendipity, unexpected career choices, work in several countries, and the good fortune to take on increasing leadership roles over the years, most notably serving as your dean. I have a few words of advice for you as you build your own futures. Unexpected opportunities arise in life. Explore and embrace them. Such detours can enrich both your career and your life. Find good and selfless mentors. Learn from them and with them and stay connected with them throughout your career. Most importantly, enjoy what you do. And if that joy slips away for a time through disappointment or burnout, please get help and fix things. You can and you will. I'm a pediatrician who grew up in New York City and expected to spend my life living and working in the Northeast. After my residency, I moved to Atlanta unexpectedly and with great trepidation when my husband took a position at the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. I scrambled to find a fellowship and found not only a career to pursue, but a lifelong mentor and fairy godfather in my neonatology division chief. In search of an adventure, my husband and I then decided to move to Bangladesh to work at the International Center for Diarrheal Disease Research, certainly an odd place for a neonatologist just out of training in the US. We spent four extraordinary years in Bangladesh that were life-changing. Working as a clinician and researcher in this low resource setting was certainly in stark contrast to the neonatal ICUs and referral centers of the US. We learned important lessons about health equity and improving maternal and child health in an area of the world where at the time, infant mortality rates mirrored those of the United States at the turn of the 20th century. The experience set the stage for a career commitment to improving care for mothers and babies in the US and in low-income countries throughout the world, a journey that took us to a Cambodian refugee camp in Thailand, and some years later to the World Health Organization to work on improving birth outcomes. My career continued with a detour working in basic science laboratories in Sweden and the US. Time in the lab taught me to respect the rigor patience, hard work, and discipline of the lab-based investigator. 
I returned to my roots in neonatology, joining the faculty at Emory in Atlanta with a broader view of the world and a newfound interest in infectious diseases, clinical trials, and global child survival. More than two decades later, I moved to Houston to join this great medical school. And what a wonderful school this is, a patchwork of so many remarkable people, great students, great trainees, faculty, and staff, each doing important work. I'm so privileged to be a part of that work. The winding road of my own career underscores how fortunate we are to be members of a profession that allows us to pursue varied career paths while bringing meaning to our own lives and the lives of others every day. Mention, of course, must be made of COVID-19. The virus hovers like a dark cloud over this otherwise joyous day. We're living through an unpredictable and scary time. Since January, the world has been battling the largest global pandemic since the flu epidemic of 1918. After first appearing in China in early January, COVID-19 spread rapidly around the globe, and on March 11th, the WHO declared a global pandemic. Untold number of people have been infected, and more than 200,000 have died. Without comprehensive testing the full scale of this pandemic, the true number of infections and deaths remains a frightening unknown. The pandemic has highlighted the risks to vulnerable and underserved populations and reminds us that health care is a human right. The world is engaged in an unprecedented research and treatment effort to develop a vaccine and to search for improved therapies. Scientific and collaborations um, have aligned across borders, laboratories, specialties, and institutions. Never before in my long medical career have biomedical researchers, physicians, and other healthcare professionals been more needed, more valued, and more revered by society. Care teams on the front lines of this pandemic are our heroes, risking their lives to save others. Soon you will be joining their ranks as residents. This is such a complicated time to be a young physician. I cannot imagine how this pandemic will mold your careers. But I know in my heart that this crisis will bring out the best of our collective humanity. We will emerge stronger and more resilient and, yes, even kinder, able to face the challenges of medicine today and in the coming decades. As a class, you've shown extraordinary resilience in weathering the changing landscape and stresses of completing your medical education during the crisis. You've handled disappointment and challenges with great maturity, learning the importance of being prepared for unforeseen challenges that will most certainly occur over the course of your professional lives. Those of us who care for critically ill patients are privileged to be unwittingly uh, invited into the lives of patients and families at their most vulnerable. No one ever imagines that they or a loved one will develop a life-threatening illness. Caring for critically ill patients requires us to go beyond what evidence-based medicine has to offer, to consider the broader implications of serious illness, to connect emotionally with our patients, and to listen very carefully. During this global crisis, the values, skills, and perspectives you learned from faculty in the McGovern Center for Humanities and Ethics are particularly relevant. COVID-19 changes everything, and COVID-19 changes nothing. Professional obligation and the virtues of compassion, respect, and integrity don't take sick leave. They're more important now than ever. There's great joy in helping very ill patients get well, but even in cases where there are no medical cures, we can minister to patients and families and help them through immensely difficult situations. My daughter is a trauma critical care surgeon in New Jersey, working in the ICUs of her university hospital at the epicenter of the outbreak. 
she spoke in poignantly about the grace and bravery of her colleagues, specifically noting the hospital chaplains, sometimes the most direct connection between seriously ill patients and family members who sadly cannot be with them. The white coat, celebrated during the white coat ceremony soon after you started medical school, is symbolic of the great profession you're about to enter. When you put on that white coat for the very first time, you were making an implicit promise to become the best physician you can be. Over the last four years, you've learned an enormous amount about science and medicine, about technology, about systems of healthcare, about quality outcomes, about professionalism and the importance of teamwork, about human relationships and ministering to others. But perhaps most importantly, you've learned an enormous amount about yourselves. As you continue your journey, embrace the opportunities and new experiences of your training programs, ask questions for yourself and for the many patients you'll care for. Learn from each other and from the care teams around you. Be observant on rounds, not just about the scientific aspects of learning, but about how senior physicians and other clinicians connect with their patients. Nurses and other experienced caregivers at the bedside no one patients are not doing well and need special attention. Listen to their advice and help answer their questions. They have a wisdom and sensitivity about patients that will teach you clinical intuition as well as compassion and the art of healing. Perhaps most important, listen to and learn from your patients. Mothers really do know when their children are sick. Patients know when things are not going right. As you listen to your patients, you'll become better doctors, and you'll also learn about courage and dignity and eloquence in the face of illness and suffering. Be mindful of the importance of these years to build a great foundation for the house of medicine that you've chosen to enter. Continue to grow into those white coats. Study hard so that you'll gain confidence in your medical knowledge and your skills. Be curious and observant, but humble enough to ask for help when needed. Learn from the medical and human dramas that you will become a part of. And remember that medicine is a lifelong, ever-changing journey. Being a doctor is always a delicate balance between wonderful and meaningful work and the importance of building a life outside of work. I hope that your experiences in medicine will help you become more complete human beings, wiser about the human condition, using that wisdom to become better doctors, worthy mentors and role models, and more complete and present friends, spouses, parents, colleagues, and contributing members of society. In a few minutes, each of you will recite the Hippocratic Oath, an oath that in one form or another has been spoken by physicians for centuries. The oath underscores the profession of medicine is rooted not simply in the accumulation of medical knowledge that changes over time, but in ethical and humanitarian principles that do not. We will be watching as your careers unfold seize opportunities that arise, sometimes non-traditional and outside of your comfort zone. Find champions who care about you and your life as well as your career. We have confidence that you will each make important contributions to the profession of medicine. Think big, vision matters. What you do can change the world. I love this quote from Abraham Verghese's novel, Cutting for Stone. Home is not where you're from. Home is where you're needed. You are each needed in the house of medicine more than ever. And please remember that you'll always be a part of the McGovern Medical School family, and you will always have a place in our home. Today calls to mind the words also of the physician poet John Stone, who was a colleague of mine, that he spoke at the Emory graduation in 1982. For this is the day of joy. For this is the morning to rejoice. For this is the beginning. Therefore, let us rejoice. 
I'm honored and grateful to share this special moment with you and with each of your families. Uh, congratulations, welcome to this remarkable profession. Thank you very much. Hello 2020 McGovern Medical School graduates. My name is Dr. Priscilla Alfaro and I'm the current president of the McGovern Medical School Alumni Association. On behalf of the more than 8,000 graduates from our medical school, I wanna congratulate each and every one of you on this prestigious and notable achievement. I was in your shoes in May, 1989, but not quite under the same circumstances. Who would have ever thought we would be experiencing a pandemic that has caused so much disruption and confusion mixed with uncertainty. The silver lining has been the renewed respect and recognition for physicians and other healthcare workers who have been diligently preparing for the impact of COVID-19 and working tirelessly on the front lines. You are setting foot into a profession that will require you to continue to adapt to change and learn as you go. Your ability to embrace the changes and challenges that confront us in medicine and to be a part of the solution will not only ensure a sense of satisfaction, but allow you to become even more resilient. We are privileged to practice medicine and become an important part of people's lives. As doctors, you're considered the leaders of not only a healthcare team, but in society. Be kind and patient with your patients. We have much to learn from them as they do from us. Maya Angelou once wrote, I've learned that people will forget what you said, forget what you did, but people will never forget how you made them feel. In order to remain available to help others, remember to take care of yourself and each other. Don't allow graduation to be the last day you keep in touch with your fellow classmates. And by the way, we have developed an excellent accessible alumni website to keep you informed and updated. We wish you the best as you enter your next chapter as an intern and resident in your chosen medical specialty. You'll find another steep learning curve with challenges and will gain a new network of colleagues and mentors and even become a mentor yourself. Don't forget to appreciate and make time for your support team of family and friends. They've been essential in your journey and accomplishments up to this point and will be in your ongoing growth. I've seen and experienced so many changes in medicine in the last 31 years since I graduated from medical school. From the names of the professors to our reliance on technology and the new and updated treatments and procedures that continue to evolve. One thing that never changes is the enthusiasm, professionalism, and deep commitment that this institution and our profession has for advancing healthcare. I was looking forward to meeting you in person but I'm embracing my adaptability to instead send you a virtual official welcome to your new family, the McGovern Medical School Alumni Association. Stay safe and be well. Class of 2020. So sorry we could not be at the George R. Brown or Hobby Center, but just imagine we are all there right now with uh, high performance air conditioners. This is just your last moment before you become a true doctor. By the authority vested by law in the Board of Regents of the University of Texas system, I now confer upon each of you who have completed the requirements the degree Doctor of Medicine you are a real doctor right now. Congratulations. And one last thing. I would like to thank each of you for trusting this great university and this great medical school for your education. I know you will make us all proud. Congratulations again. I have the pleasure of leading our new graduates in the oath of Hippocrates. I do solemnly swear by whatever I hold most sacred that I will be loyal to the profession of medicine and just and generous to its members, that I will lead my life and practice my profession in uprightness and honor, that into whatsoever house I shall enter 
It shall be for the good of the sick to the utmost of my power. Holding myself far aloof from wrong, from corruption, from the tempting of others to vice, that I will exercise my profession solely for the cure of my patients and will give no drug, perform no operation for a criminal purpose, even if solicited, far less suggest it. That whatsoever I shall see or hear of the lives of men which is not fitting to be spoken, I will keep inviolably secret. These things do I swear, and now, should I be true to this my oath, may prosperity and good repute be ever mine. The opposite, should I prove myself forsworn. Graduating class of 2020, it is such an honor to be asked to be your student marshal. I'm so sorry that graduation didn't happen for you. And I've been looking forward to this ever since your very first day of medical school. Remember that when we were in doctoring and foundations, very first week, and then the freshman retreat, and then those were the days after the first module examination. Some of you were really happy. I cried with some of you. It was tough working with you through doctoring one and doctoring two and doctoring three, and look at where you are now. I've seen you grow up through your first year, your second year, in the OBGYN on that rotation, and then finally through the USMLE Step 2 CS workshops. It's been such a privilege, my distinct honor, to be working with you and teaching you this whole time. I am so proud of each and every one of you, of what you've been able to achieve. And so, uh, we can't really shake hands today, we can't even really hug because of social distancing and we're just doing this remotely, but I just want to tell you from my heart I'm so proud of you. Congratulations, because today we are colleagues. Now, a word to your parents, your grandparents, uncles, aunts, friends, spouses, and just those coaches or teachers who've helped you. You have been the inspiration that have really helped this graduate to be able to get to where they are now. You have helped them from the time that they were young and mentored and guided them. I'm so sorry that I'm not going to be able to meet you with you in person, but if I can, I'd like to tell each one of you, thank you so much for investing in your graduate because you have put the part inside of them that you can't really get otherwise by books or teaching or learning, and that's right here in the heart. So thank you so much for guidance and knowledge and the direction. And now, as your student marshal, if I were, I would have led you all the way down to your seats and then watched you as you went up on the stage. You come up as a stage as a student and then you leave as a physician. And there I would be just gleaming with pride to say to you, welcome to our society. Congratulations and may you have a wonderfully fulfilling and rewarding career and we just thank you for what you're doing for the many, many patients that you're going to see over your lifetime. Congratulations, class of 2020.
is for old time's sake one last review packet, which the following best describes the McGovern graduate of 2020. A. Honest. B. Team. C. Dedicated. And D. Inspiring. And of course the answer is all of the above. A. Honest because, especially when we faculty review the end of course student evaluations, I used to get panic attacks and then realize that your comments made me a really better teacher. Answer B. Team because your class does really pull together, support, and collaborate together. C. Dedicated because we really recall your amazing over-the-top Harry Potter freshman retreat that you put on for the first years, and that's really the best ever. Answer D. Inspiring because we started McGovern together. This was the first course that I had ever directed. It was your first day in medical school. And day after day, month after month, you made me a better teacher, a better doctor, and ultimately a better person. I owe so much to each of you, and you are what is so special and the best about medicine. Congratulations, graduates of 2020. Please join me in congratulating our new graduates. Today marks a milestone you'll never forget. Today you become a part of the history of this great medical school as a member of our 47th graduating class. You are our legacy and our future. Graduates, I'm extremely proud of each of you for what you've accomplished and for what you will achieve over the coming years. You're becoming physicians at a time that the world really needs you. We look to your knowledge, your capabilities, and your courage, and welcome you into this most noble profession. Please remember to be kind to each other, to be kind to yourselves, congratulate each other, and mostly enjoy this wonderful day. Congratulations to all of you.